Framing and composition. We have two eyes and see things three-dimensionally, but the camera sees everything two-dimensionally, which means pictures frequently lack depth. If you shoot things straight on, the picture can look flat, but if you shoot at a diagonal, you can play with perspective and create angles, which creates a sense of depth. So this is how not to shoot. The camera is straight in front of the subject, who's sitting on a sofa, which is right in front of a wall. When you look at this, the image is quite obviously lacking in depth. It's flat. There are lines coming out of the head. The statue looks like a growth on his head. He's centrally framed. It really is quite awful. Now, if the camera moves to the diagonal, and it's not that far away from where he was, but you'll see the difference in the image is huge. Suddenly there's depth, there are no awful lines or growths, he has space behind him, he's much better framed, and it's much more pleasant on the eye. How you frame a subject should not only create an expectation of what's going to happen or be seen next, it's crucial in storytelling. The subject here is pretty centrally framed. There's nothing technically wrong with it, but it doesn't really create any expectation. We can't imagine what may be going to happen. But if you simply pan to the right and change your framing, look what happens. Immediately this suggests that someone is going to come up behind the guy, the audience is drawn into the story, and now has an expectation of what is going to happen next. This is storytelling by creative framing. Again, if it pans back to the left, the expectation is that either someone is going to come and sit next to him, he's going to leave, or that you're going to be showing what it is that he's looking at. The rule of thirds. This is a convention that also applies to photography and painting, which says that it's most pleasing on the eye if you place your main subjects at the intersections of lines dividing the screen vertically and horizontally into three equal parts. It means that things don't get bunched all together in the middle with nothing at either sides or having things on the extreme edges with nothing in the middle. Camera setup. You should be thinking about height, the position, and the angle of the camera for each of your different shots. Very so here you see the camera is below the eye line. It's known as a low angle. When you film a low angle like this, the subject looks much bigger in frame. Any hand action looks very big and exaggerated. By doing it this way, you can make your subject look domineering and intimidating. So here you can see the camera is now above the eye line. It's known as a high angle shot. The subject looks smaller, intimidated, alone. It's good if you want a high geography shot. You get the feeling of looking in on the room. If you don't change the angle of each shot, then you're in danger of getting a jump cut. So every time you change shot size, change the angle. Here you can see the camera taking a wide shot and then without changing angle, he shoots a close-up. Watch how the picture jumps when they're cut together. What you should do is move to a different angle for the close-up. This leads to a much smoother edit.